guys. Beautiful fish. Let's see if we can get a few more of them, we'll be happy. Yeah, everyone. Welcome to tonight's video. So, recently I've taken up floundering. Um, I went out last year and sort of had a crack at it. Didn't really do any good, so I sort of lost interest. But then this year's come around. Um, had to flounder a lot. Had some really good nights. So I went, you know what? I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna see if I can have another crack and see if we can get some fish. So I went out recently without the cameras. Um, and actually had a really good night. I was only out there for about an hour and a half um, and I managed to find five fish. I was absolutely stoked. The problem I had is when I was out there, um, the light that I brought from the local tackle store wasn't very bright and I reckon that was probably half the battle. Ran off, uh, I think it was AA batteries. I think I had six AA batteries and it just was not bright enough for what I needed it for. Went out and got the hand spear as well, um, and that in itself is a absolute nightmare. Um, but anyways guys, today's video is all about, I wanted to make a new floundering light um, so that I can see better underwater. So I've made one, and this is it here. So I'll step back so that it comes into frame. This is it here, just made out of PVC, a um, couple of bits and pieces, and uh, this light here is, comes out like that. So this is just like just your standard LED driving light. Um, I can't even remember where I got these from, to be honest. I had two of them, and I actually have a horror story on the other one that uh, failed me at the most crucial point. Um, but that just fits in there nicely. Uh, and what that is, I've actually attached that to a railblazer um, like a railblazer plug type mount type thing and I've noticed that when that's on there that fit ni fits nice and snug and helps me see underwater a lot these are water proof to I think a meter and a half something like that um, for about an hour I think it said on the website um, but if you have a look on the King's website now the King's website have similar lights to these. I think they I think you can get two pairs when they're on special for like 49 bucks. So you get four of these lights. Um, and for a cheap alternative to the floundering lights that you get from a tackle shop, like prawn lights and flounder lights, this is 10 times better. And probably a lot cheaper. Um, so I'll go through some of the bits and pieces that I've got on how to make this, and then we'll get stuck in and I'll put one together. All right guys, take a look at some of the footage I've got recently from a recent trip. Now, I didn't take the cameras out a couple of weeks ago uh, when I actually got a few fish, but I did manage to take them out last week. Um, I managed to get five fish again last week. I don't know how many I got on camera because I haven't actually looked at the footage yet, but have a look and uh, we'll see what we can find and then we'll get stuck into making the plan alike. make one of these flounder lights. Now, if you take a look, this is the 25 mil pressure pipe. Um, and I've figured that 25 mil is probably a good size, mainly because if you get the driving lights, like the one that I showed you at the start, um, the railblazer mount that I have that attaches to the light actually fits in these pipes like a snug fit. Like you can't move it once it's in there, it's perfect. Um, the other bits and pieces you're going to need are some PVC cement, a 25mm T intersection, two plugs, and this is pretty much just for comfort. Unless you're making a mount, 
which means you need one there. Um, so as you can see here, I've actually got half of it built already. Um, with the lights that are on the other one that I've already made, the light's only this big. Well, this one, I'm going twice as big. I've pulled it apart and siliconed every single aspect of this light to try and keep it waterproof. Um, only because the other little driving light that I had, I used that um, the last trip out. And after the third fish, the light decided to stop working. I thought it might have been the battery, so I pulled it out, had a look at it, and I actually had water inside the lens, and it burnt out three of the little LEDs. So I'm not taking any chances with this big one. Um, this was a little bit more expensive than obviously the two little lights, and again, I've had this for ages, and I can't even remember where I got it from. But I've made up a mount. So as you can see here, so the mount, just a bit of metal, a bit of steel, uh, onto the brackets, and then the little cap. So the idea is the pole is going to go up that way and then the light i'm going to be able to see what i'm doing with the light now the cord that comes out of the light is just your two positive and negative and what i'm going to attach that to is this is a fpv um, i think it's like an extension so you've got male and female on either end now i've cut off the other end so that i can attach that wire direct to the light and what I'm going to use to attach that are these guys here. Now it's got some solder in the middle and you put each wire in either end. Once it gets to the melting point, the solder melts and then fuses the two wires together. One other thing that you need is some heat proof or some heat shrink tubing, just so that when that's connected, you can put the heat proof or the heat shrink tubing over the top and that's going to keep that nice and watertight because that will be underwater, that entire connection. All right, guys. So we've got pretty much the basics down pat. Um, let's get stuck in and I'll show you how easy it is to make one of these flounder lights. All right, so what you want to do, get your 25 mil PVC pipe. Um, because I've already got the bracket ready to go, what you want to do is leave that one meter length hole. You want to put that into that pipe there. That's how you want it to come up. Now you want to glue that in place. So what you got to do, get your PVC cement. You don't need a lot of the PVC cement um, because it will stick pretty quickly. So all you have to do, get your PVC cement on the inside, just around the edge just like so. And then you want to do the same thing to the end of the PVC pipe. And like I said, you don't need a lot because as soon as this grabs hold, it's gonna, gonna hold and it'll glue within probably 10 seconds, I reckon. And put the cap back on. Now what you have to do, you wanna work pretty quick. Put that straight in, just like so. Push down, push down to lock that into place. Hold it for about 10 seconds, and then that glue will take hold, and it won't be coming out. All right, step two. All right, so that's the main part of our flounder light done. Now the idea with leaving the one meter length hole is that length there is one meter. So what the idea is, when I'm holding this, I've got a meter of pipe underneath my arm, if you're a bit taller, maybe you need to go a little bit longer. If you're a bit shorter, maybe shorten that length just so that you get the right height. You want to get nice and comfortable because you're going to be out there for a few hours. So you want to be comfortable and you want to be able to walk around with your flounder light and not get a tired arm. So as you can see by the look of this one, next step is going to be to put the T intersection in. Now, because we've already got this bracket in place, what you want to do is make sure when you glue that T intersection into place that it's the same way as the bracket. No point doing it that way, because when you're holding the handle, the light's gonna be facing the camera. The advantage with this one though, is I can actually turn this to whatever side I need it to face, um, and that's not gonna slip because I've got that glued in place with the bolt. So again, get your PVC glue, 
Yeah, it's on the It's on the side. Then we get one side of the tea. On the inside, it's on the side. Try to put it in there because it's very sticky. Put it in place. Just like that. Put it down so the box in place. That's nice and straight. Put it down just hold for 10 seconds. So what you want to do next, this part of the pipe here. Now, you want a handle and you want something that goes up under your armpit. Yeah, with the second cap. The reason I've got the second cap on this end is because when it sits under your arm, especially during summer, I'm only gonna be wearing a singlet. If I've got an open pipe, it's gonna cut under my arm. Whereas if I've got the cap on there, absolutely sweet. You need to cut this pipe depending on how long you want your handle to hold onto. So I'm gonna cut it about that big. Uh, you can do it however long you want. The handle I've found doesn't really matter. So if you have a look at this one here, that sits up under my arm, and that's the handle there. So I can hold that and move around wherever I need to move around. All right, guys, so I've got the handle cut. So the handle's gonna go in there, just like so. And that's how big the handle is. So let's get that glued into place. Again, hold it for about 10 seconds. All right, there we have stage two, done and dusted. All right, now what you wanna do, you need to get this part right, because depending on how tall you are, is gonna depend on how high you want this next section. Obviously you don't want it up here, you want it to be, sit to be sitting underneath your arm. 19 inches, so it's about there. So we're gonna cut that pipe roughly about there. So we'll get that done now. All right, there you go guys. Sorry about the rain overhead. So there we have that part of the pipe. So again, we'll glue this in place. What I wanna do first though, is just test it out, make sure it's the right height, which yes it is, absolutely perfect. As you can see there, arms almost fully extended and it's perfect height for me. So we're gonna get that glued into place. that into place we're 99% of the way there all you got to do now is connect the wires up run it up the shaft of your handle um, and then you're ready to go all you got to do is go and get a spear all right so what you want to do now is connect the wires up I'll quickly get that done I'll show you how I do that with the heat gun and the connections that I've got. Have a look at some more floundering videos and then I'll have a brief talk on the types of spears that I have and why I use them. All right, so what you wanna do, best way to test your connection is obviously grab your battery. So I'm using a FPV 12 volt, seven amp battery. Um, that's what I've been using for my flounder lights. Now I've got it written down, red to brown, black to blue. So you go red to brown, Black to blue, and Bob's your uncle. Flander light works. All right, so let's get these connections done. Obviously disconnect the battery first. And it's as simple as putting this guy in one end, all the way so that the wire is touching the solder. The red one goes in this side, same thing, all the way so it's touching the solder. Get your heat gun out. Heat that connection up until the solder melts. Bob's your uncle, waterproof, sealed, and ready to go. So I'll get that done quickly, and then I'll show you the final result. There we have the heat shrink soldered connections. And to test that out again, just let it cool down a little bit. It's a little bit hot. There you go. Light's working. Connections are good. Let that cool down a little bit. And then once it's cooled down, we can bring the heat shrink tubing over the top of the entire connection. And Bob's your uncle. Flounder light, almost complete. What you wanna do last with this connection is put this heat shrink tubing straight over the top. Now that it's cooled down a little bit. because so after all your hard work, you wanna make sure it's a nice tight, watertight con con connection. All right, there you go. That's covered that connection nicely. I'm gonna get the heat gun out. I'm gonna 
heat shrink that and then I'll show you how to connect all this together and get the flounder light going. So here we have our light, our light frame. Um, light goes in the bottom. The idea is set your light so that it runs parallel to the ground when you've got your hand like that ready to go. So if you look there, that light pretty much sits parallel. Maybe go one more notch. Maybe there. And there you have your flounder light. And what you want to do with this wire is run this up the shaft all the way up to about, about there. Now all I'm using is electrical tape just to hold that in place all the way up. And the idea is you want it to connect just to just above the handle and then this connection here. I run a little like a little bum bag, that little sash. Uh, the battery sits in the sash at the back. This cord connects to the battery and there's your flounder light ready to go. So there you have it guys. The flounder light is very, very easy to make um, and it's pretty cheap. Like everything cost me, not a lot, apart from the light itself, um, I've probably spent pff, maybe 30 bucks. That was about it um, and I can make two or three lights depending on how many how many different lights that I have. Anyways guys, if you liked that video, uh, please give us a thumbs up. Please comment below if there's anything you wanna know. They are very simple to make um, and it's taken me all of probably 20 minutes. But anyways guys, hope you liked that footage. Stay tuned and uh, till next time, see you on the water. Cheers guys. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but I'm hoping it can. It's just here in front of me. And what you gotta look for when you're floundering is their eyes. Got him. There you go. There's the flounder there. How well the camera can pick it up. Good shot too. Got him. Right through the gill plate, right through the head. All right, guys. All right, guys. We'll come up to another one. He's moving at the moment, so it makes it a little bit tricky. Got him. There you go. Good shot. Straight through the head. Yeah.